When my first book, Frostbite, came out five years ago, Publishers Weekly called me the reincarnation of James M. Kane at the peak of his literary powers. The hardcover went back into five printings before going to paperback. It was translated into a dozen languages, including Urdu. I bought a big house and matching BMWs for me and my wife. I thought my second novel, Do Unto Others, was my best work. The Los Angeles Times called it a 778-page suicide note for a once-promising writing career. That was the best review I got. The book was remaindered to bargain bin oblivion after just six weeks. We lost the house, the cars, and moved in with my in-laws. My publisher dropped me, and my wife nearly did too. And that's the book biz, my friend. One day you're at the top, signing books in big city bookstores for hundreds of adoring fans. And the next day, find yourself here, on the road through middle America, signing your self-published third novel, and paying for your tour by selling autographed fifth edition copies of your first book out of the trunk of your car. Excuse me, where can I find the wart remover? I have no idea. Well, get the hell up and find out. This is a desperate situation. It's doubled in size just this week. I don't work here. Then what are you doing at the help desk? This isn't a help desk. I'm an author signing copies of my new book. Well, what's it about? An insomniac student who volunteers for a sleep study only to find himself involved in an erotic relationship with a female researcher that leads to murder. Are there cats in it? Why would there be cats in it? Because cats make great characters. Don't you read books? Yes. I must have missed the one called Cats. I like cat books. Especially the ones where they solve murder. If you're smart, you'll write a cat book. Attention Sherway shoppers. We're pleased to welcome best-selling author Kevin Dangler, who's signing his latest book, Twisted Sheets, at the end of aisle four. Be sure to stop by and say hello, and on your way, don't forget to visit the produce department where Idaho potatoes are on sale, $3.99 for a 10-pound bag. Can't believe you're here. Neither can I. Would you sign this for me? My pleasure. Would you like it personalized or just signed and dated? Personalized. It's Megan. It's me. I, I've wanted to meet you for so long. I, I think you are the greatest writer. Well, and you and I have something in common. <laughs> I'm joking. It's a little embarrassing for me to admit, but this is the sexiest book I've ever read. I'm very flattered. No, I mean it. I used to make my ex-boyfriend read it to me before we'd make love. That might have been one of the reasons we broke up. That he didn't like books. All books are just mine. No, I'm a librarian. I collect signed first edition mysteries. And, God, hundreds of them. But yours is the only one I keep beside my bed. Must be a very impressive collection. Would you like to see it? Hey, lover. Let's make the scene. I've got a crazy high five in my limousine.
Hey. Come on in, I'll get you a beer. That'd be nice. Probably seems pretty crummy, huh, compared to your mansion? Uh, there's no place nicer to me than a room full of books. I'm gonna get you a beer, you make yourself at home. <clears throat> to Megan. This one is from the heart. Mike. She wasn't kidding. It was an impressive collection. She had signed first editions from the biggest names in the business. And now, one from a guy who used to be. I didn't realize so many authors came to Owensboro. Oh. There's a mystery festival here every summer. Guy from Monk was here last year. Well, that must have been thrilling. Yeah. Mostly I travel all over the country and go to these book signings. Stand in the long lines. Sounds like a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. It's worth it. It's worth it just to meet the authors. Why? Because they let me see what they see. They let me feel what they feel. They let me dream what they dream. It doesn't get more intimate than that. I want them to know who they've touched. If I can, I... I want to touch them back. That's very touching. This, this is unreal, you. You standing here in my house. It's even more exciting for me. I don't think that's possible. My. I knew exactly what to say. She'd practically given me the words herself. The warm breath on my neck when I feel most alone. Soft caress along my arm when I think I'm lost. The presence I feel standing behind me when I write. I always thought it was just my imagination, but now I know it was not. Now I know it was you. It was such a load of crap. Uh, let me show you where I keep that book. Read to me. So much for so long, so many times. I felt like a star again. The future seemed full of possibility. And booty. You going for more beer? I'm gonna go get the book. Well, it's right here, but <laughs> unless you've got some Viagra, I'm gonna need a little break before I read you anymore. That's not the book I'm looking for. I want you to sign my book. <laughs> Haven't I given you enough to remember me by? This is my book of love. Your what? Well, no, see... All these names, they're, they're writers, just like you. And they once shared their dreams with me, and then, and then their love. 
Y- you've had with all of them? Mm-hmm. Even her? Twice. <laughs> I can't sign that. You won't sign my book of love? It wouldn't be right. Why not? This was a private moment, just for the two of us. I don't want to share it with anyone else. No. I do. I'm, I'm so happy right now. I want everybody to know about it. I, I want to tweet it to the whole world. Tweet? You can't tweet this. No, I want everybody to know that I touched you the same way that you touched me. You can't do that. Watch me. My wife would divorce me, and then who would take care of me? You? Just when I thought my life couldn't get any worse, I had to go and kill the one fan I still had left. And a hottie, too. What the hell was I gonna do? Think. She fell. She hit her head on one of her thousands of books. She... Forensics for dummies. My salvation. Oh, it was full of great advice for the unprepared murderer. How thoughtful of you, supporting writers to the very end. Shoppers, there's a killer in our fire. He don't look no different than either you or I, except for the bloody yellow feathers in the corner of his mind. Attention, Kmart shoppers, there's a killer in our fire. Just a few bucks to give you blood and skin Take a little while, but it'll draw you in When the hatchet falls, you'll be wearing a grin Just like the killer in our fight We got a blue light special on hefty bags Rubber kitchen gloves and clean up rags Guaranteed to beat our competitors' ads Come see the killer in our fight To Megan, a true book lover Just a little bit of his time For he buries a hammer right between your eyes Come see the killer in our fight You can't afford to survive There's a killer in our fight That was it? I'd committed the perfect murder and destroyed the evidence. It was a shame I couldn't write about it. Are you Kevin Dangler? No. 
I'm a Kevin Dangler imposter who goes from one retail hell hole to another, enjoying the vicarious thrill of not selling any books. I like Frostbite. Thanks, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Your last book sucked, though. Welcome to Deer Park. Dumb country! Pumpkin. Welcome to Deer Park. Uh, if it'd make you feel better, I could have his car towed. You could do that? It's among the least of my superpowers. You'd be surprised what a homicide detective can do. Lieutenant Bud Flannick, Owensboro PD. You're a long way from home. Well, it's about a four-hour drive. Well, you could do it in less time, but I like to stop off in Lewiston for a burger on the way. <laughs> what brings you to Dan Hour Drugs? Well, y you do, Mr. Dangler. I missed you when you was in Owensboro, and I'm a big fan. Really? Well, let me hurry up and sign a book for you. I know you got a long drive back home. You know what I like best about your books? How you really get inside the killer's head. Gives me some insight, let me tell you. I've often thought about calling you up for advice. That's very flattering. Now, what would you like me to sign in your book? As a matter of fact, I'm working an unusually difficult case right now. This librarian is murdered in her own home, hit over the head with a blunt object. We don't have any idea why. killer must have left a fingerprint or a hair or something you could go on. <laughs> Whoever did it wiped the place clean. We got nothing. It's like she was killed by a ghost. Hmm. Any witnesses? <laughs> no, we aren't that lucky. How would you do this if you were writing it up as a story? How would you catch the guy? Well, in fiction, the killer usually makes a mistake. The subtle behavioral clues are always best, much more satisfying and dramatic than forensic clues. And that's what I like best about your books, especially your first one. Did I mention that this librarian collected books? Strictly signed first editions. Great hobby. Keeps a guy like me in business. <laughs> Funny thing was, though, that out of all the hundreds of books that she owned, she only had one that wasn't a first edition. This one. Signed by you. It's a fifth print, just like all the rest of the books in your trunk. I wasn't the first author ruined by a remaindered book, but I would certainly be the most memorable. Would you still like me to sign your book? Please. I had no trouble coming up with an inscription to Detective Bud Flannick, who caught all of my mistakes. It could be worse. I could be a cat. Make you laugh, make you smile Give you just a little bit of his time For he buries a hammer right between your eyes Come see the killer in our fire We got a blue light special long hill ten sin You can see them lights swirling as you come in Thank you for shopping, hope you come again Come see the killer in our fire 
Come for the thrill of your life We're selling death half price Hope you check out live There's a killer in our five You can't afford to survive There's a killer in our five